Hi guys, welcome back to the Yarder server. Today's video is kind of a follow on video to the last one, which was about the H710P mini and how to enable PCI 3.0 to gain that extra PCI 3.0 bandwidth on your Dell RAID controller. Now in the last video, I basically showed you how, you know, which, which card to look for and how to enable the PCI 3.0 capability on that card. But today's video is just going to be a little bit more of a kind of in-depth video on what actually changes in that H710P that allows it to run in PCI 3.0 speeds, right? So the, the uh, chipset on that H710P uh, mini is the SAS 2208 chipset with revision D1, which is the one that is uh, PCI 3.0 capable. But as you saw in the last video, by default, it is running in PCI 2.0 speeds. And so what is the difference when you make that setting change? What is actually changing? That's the question I want to help you understand in this video. All right. So before I made the change to the H710P to enable the PCI 3.0, I actually took a copy of the SBR, okay, which is the serial boot record. And this is a 448-byte, I guess, configuration data for the card that is on an EEPROM chip on the uh, H710P. And I also then took a copy of that same SBR uh, off the same card after enabling PCI 3.0 and guess what? It's not identical. Okay. So this is how, uh, it's enabling the PCI 3.0 on the card. So when you make that change, if you followed the last video and you made that change to your 8710P mini, this is what's actually happening. All right. So I have a copy of both, um, the SBR before the change and the SBR after the change. And so that's what these two files here are. The first one, it says H710P underscore TY8F9. Uh, That's that part number that you want. And in PCI 2.0 mode, I saved the SBR. And this is a 448-byte SBR. It's actually 224 bytes, but there's usually a duplicate copy. All right, so I did the exact same thing uh, right after changing it to PCI 3.0 and then rebooting the, the system, right? And so then we had the PCI 3.0 enabled. All right, so just to kind of show you, first of all, that this is uh, different, you can see that diff is saying that these two things are different. So I'm gonna show you what's actually different about it. All right, so let's go ahead and do a hex dump on the SBR so we can kind of see where the difference really is. All right, so I'm gonna do this in hex with the uh, X1 format. Uh, I'm gonna enable dash V so it doesn't um, pad things with asterisks. Sometimes if there's a lot of zeros, it just you know fills in with asterisks. And let's dump the PCI 2.0 version. All right, so that is the content of the SBR. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other screen on the right here for the PCI 3.0 version. All right, so let me just kind of explain the contents that you're looking at here. First of all, like I said, this the SBR is actually only 224 bytes, and so the, the content is really up to this point right here, okay? The rest of it, if you look carefully, is really just a copy of the prior section, and this is basically the backup copy, okay? So you really only need to look at the first half. And similarly, on this side, we just need to look at the top half as well, okay? Now, I don't know what all these different bytes mean. I can identify a couple of them for you so that uh, you can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at here. But uh, for example, um, for the uh, 100, this, uh, this is the uh, more significant byte here. So this is actually the uh, 1000. That is the PCIe code for Broadcom or LSI, right? And then the next one is 005B. And that is for the uh, LSI SAS 2208 controllers. And then we have a 0104. This is a PCIe class code that designates this as a RAID controller. And so if you have if you have a version of the H710P that's converted to IT mode, you're going to see instead of 0104, you're going to see 0107, and that's for the HBA 
uh, SAS controller version. All right, and then now we have over here the code uh, 1028, uh, and that is the uh, subsystem vendor code for Dell, basically. And then we have 1F34, and that is the subsystem uh, product code for the H710P. All right, so you can see that some of the uh, basically PCIe configuration information is in the content here. Now, where is the difference between the PCIe 2.0 um, SBR versus the PCIe 3.0 SBR? And the difference, well, there's actually two differences, but one doesn't uh, matter in terms of explaining it. But one difference you might see immediately is down here, the very last byte of the SBR is 5.0 here, whereas it's 4F there. And that's the byte that actually doesn't matter too much because that's just a checksum basically. So you'll see the same checksum on the second half, uh, which is the copy, the backup copy. And this is just for whatever program is reading this data to kind of confirm that the data didn't get corrupted. And so it does a checksum to, to see that, you know, this is still valid. All right. So the checksum doesn't really matter, but the checksum being different does confirm for us that the content of the SBR has changed when you change to PCIe 3.0. And the byte that actually changes is the one right here. All right, so that is the, uh, let's see, I think this is 16 across, so this 17, 18th byte. All right, so on the 18th byte offset, we have a 9.1 here. And on the PCIe 3.0 version, we have 9.2. So there's a bit flip, basically, right? So there's a bit that was flipped, and that enables the PCIe 3.0. So when you are converting, if you if you followed the last video and you're, you're converting your H710P to Gen 3 link speeds, this is actually what's happening. It is basically changing the uh, the PCI configuration in the SBR. And then of course it you know updates the checksum to make sure that it's a valid checksum for the updated uh, configuration. This also means that if you, uh, once you configure an H710P in uh, Gen 3 mode or the PCI 3.0 mode, that configuration stays in the card is not in it's not a setting that stays in the system it actually stays on the card so if you move that card to another dell uh, 12th gen server it's going to retain that same pci 3.0 setting all right so that's the thing that actually changes when you make that pci gen 2 to gen 3 change or vice versa um, then it would just go back from 92 to 91 basically um, of course, that also means that one could potentially change the PCI configuration of the uh, H710Ps without actually doing it in the server. You simply have to reprogram the SBR, which can be done externally um, or by other means. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure to give it that like. And if you're interested in this type of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Also, if you want to support my channel, go check out my eBay store. I'll leave a link down in the video description. I've got the greatest selection of pre-flashed IT mode HBA SAS controllers for your true NAS, ZFS, or Unraid builds. So go check out the uh, link down in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.